All right, and welcome to part two in our little video series, Creating the Ultimate Backyard Pizza Ordering Platform. What we're gonna be covering today is actually setting up a Hasura project, adding some metadata, and deploying that to GitHub for us to be able to uh, see those changes reflected in Hasura Cloud. And to begin, we're gonna go ahead and move to our terminal. And inside of our terminal, I'm just gonna use the simple Hasura init project. You'll notice that I'm currently in an empty directory, and what I will do from here is simply init a new project, which will then allow me to choose where do I wanna have this data uh, saved. I'm not gonna update my CLI just yet. The name of my project will be called Hasura. And now we simply have a Hasura folder at the top level of this directory. What I'm now gonna do is bring over a Docker Compose file, which has the entire stack definition of running both Postgres and Hasura and connects those together for us so that we're able to uh, run a local version of Hasura and the Hasura folder will be where this version of Hasura writes all of that metadata into so that we can version those changes outside of Docker. We'll notice that we have the curl command here, so we'll head back over to our editor and I'll just simply run the curl command right here and now we'll see that we have the docker compose file parallel with the Hasura file and at this point this is all fairly standard for any of the Hasura tutorials that you've probably followed. Great, we have the project running. Now there's a couple more steps that we want to actually take care of here. And one is, is to grab the definition of the environment variable where our Postgres database is defined inside of the Hasura GraphQL engine definition. What I mean is when we go ahead and actually look at this file with, uh, I'm going to do a Pico on the Docker Compose file. We can see that we have our Postgres connection string identified with this Hasura GraphQL uh, uh, PG database URL, excuse me. I'm gonna grab this, uh, this definition here. And now when I go ahead and exit out of this, I'm gonna run uh, the Hasura project now the, for tracking metadata. So what I'm gonna do is navigate to the Hasura directory and I will now use uh, simply Hasura console to actually track metadata. So now I've navigated inside of the Hasura directory and this is where I will be able to use the Hasura CLI to tap into the running version of Hasura from the Docker Compose stack definition, I'll be able to essentially track any changes using the CLI proxied version of Hasura. So from inside of the Hasura directory, I will go ahead and say Hasura console. And this now runs a local version of Hasura, uh, at localhost 9695, which is important to note this is the metadata version that anything I do here will now track and persist inside of my Hasura instance. To begin, we need to go ahead and identify a data, a data source. So I will go ahead and call mine default with a lowercase d, and I will use a environment variable. I'm gonna use uh, Postgres, and I'll use an environment variable as the definition that I wanna use. In this case, I know that mine is PG database URL because we grabbed that from the Docker Compose file. I will go ahead and connect that database. Now I'm running a Hasura engine that is looking at the locally running version of Postgres. Okay, from here, what we need to do is actually do a detour over to our data model to see what it is that we actually wanna bring into Hasura. I'm using Moon Modeler here. It's simply a database design tool. And what we have is a simple pizza backyard management system. It's over-engineered, but that's what we do all day, right? So we have a uh, pizzas, we have friends, we have pizza toppings, and we have pizza orders. That's all we have for now. There's not gonna be more to this until potentially later on where we might want to evolve this a bit more. But for now, we're trying to follow a very simple process of being able to connect our data model to Hasura and push that up to Hasura Cloud. I'm gonna copy the SQL here. What I'm gonna do is paste in that raw SQL and it's automatically asking to track this. I am going to tell it not to at first, and I will explain why, because I want you to see what this would look like if you already had an existing database. This is a migration, so this will be saved as a migration in my metadata folder that I can track in version control. Let's call that migration init. 
So what happens now when I go back to my data view, we'll see that I have untracked tables or views. And in this case, these are all the tables. Had I chosen to track this with that SQL statement, they would automatically be added. In my case, I wanted us to see this would be what it would look like if you were to attach a database of your own, you would see these untracked tables right there. I hit track all, and I can now track all of the foreign key relationships as well. And from there, I have my project essentially running. Let's go ahead and view the GraphQL schema structure. If I were to begin querying for my friends, and I look at their pizza orders, I can look at the pizza that they would have ordered and then I can look at the actual pizza toppings and we can see that the schema is connected and all the relationships are identified. That's great. Let's have a look at what the metadata is actually doing. Back over my console, I'm going to go ahead and stop running this proxied version for now and I want to go ahead and inspect this metadata folder. We'll see that we have the metadata, we have the migrations and we have seeds which are not being used in this case because there's no default seed data. If I were to look inside of the metadata folder, we can see that we've identified a bunch of information. Databases has new information as well. And if we were to go ahead and list that out, we can see the default database is there. We could drill down and inspect all of this content, but for now what we wanna do is actually go ahead and init a new GitHub repository for this project at the top level, top level where Docker Compose and the Hazura folder are at, and we'll push this into a GitHub repository, and then we will initialize a new uh, Hazura Cloud project from this metadata. Make sure I'm at the top level. Good, I'm gonna go ahead and init a project here. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab a quick repository off screen. Okay, you'll see that we have this content now added and you can see sort of all of the files that the metadata has created. You'll notice specifically around the default uh, database, we have the YAML definition, we have its table definitions for public friend, public pizza, this is the Postgres schema that it's saved under, we have the table definitions and so on and so forth, including also the migrations we have for the init up and down SQL statements. I'm gonna push these up to uh, GitHub and we can see we have our code up in GitHub. Well, that's nothing new for this audience. Let's go ahead and connect this to our Hasura Cloud project. To begin, I'm gonna log in to Hasura Cloud and here I will simply authenticate and I will now add a new project. I'm gonna use the free tier, which limits me to US West. I will have some latency personally as I'm located closer to Frankfurt but that will be just fine for this project. Now, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to change is the name of this project, which I will call BYP. The second thing I'm gonna to need to change is actually adding the environment variable for my database, which we already grabbed previously, because these two need to connect. The metadata for what I have defined as the location of my database, an environment variable, needs to match with the environment variable that I've chosen here inside of Azure Cloud. I go to environment variables, I say new environment variable, and I will paste in the one that I've used from the other project. In this case, PG database URL. I will create that, and now I will add my connection string, which is super secret, and I will be blurring this out. All right, we can see now that I have my database connected and my console appears to be ready to go. I will go ahead and inspect that now. The last manual step that I need to do now is actually to connect my database using the same environment variable that I've defined previously, and then I can switch over to full GitHub mode. We'll be consistent with our lowercase naming of default. Again, choosing Postgres SQL. I'll do the environment variable again, and I will use the same environment variable name that I've cho chosen before. With this in place, I will go ahead and hit uh, connect database. And everything is set up. You'll see that my database is actually fully empty, but that's okay. We're using our GitHub approach. We're gonna be able to use those migration scripts to push this metadata into our project. 
Back at our overview page here, we're gonna go ahead and go down to Git Deploy, and I will say sign in with GitHub. Now I'll choose the repository that I wanna work with, and I'll identify the branch that I want to work with as well. Now I need a, a very vital step is I need to identify the Hasura directory, the name that I chose for my metadata. That is where Hasura Cloud will look for the exact metadata structure that we initialized with the, with the CLI. So in this case, I will call this Hasura, which is the name of that root level folder. It has nothing to do with the Docker Compose file. That's completely out of the picture at this point. That is only for my locally provisioned running version of Hasura engine. The Hasura metadata is all that I need here. In this case, I will go ahead and say deployment mode automatic. We might switch this later to a manual mode, but automatic is fine for what we need now. And I will actually say, don't send me failure med notifications because I will personally check on that. But success ones are great. We'll go ahead and say set up git deployment. And now we just wait for that deployment to run through. I'm gonna click on view deploy to see the exact process. All right, and we are back. We can see that the deploy worked effectively. If we head over to our dashboard and we refresh the view now, we'll see that all of our tables are there and we're able to look at our project in the same state that our local version was running in. In the next video, we'll be adding Next.js to the mix. We'll be adding that to our top level folder. We will be deploying that to Vercel using the GitHub integration over there. And with both of those in place, in the following video, we will then connect Hasura Cloud directly to Vercel so that our environment variables get copied over in a secure way. See you in the next video and hope you're having fun.